Hello everybody, today I'm happy to present you the lesson of a well-known artist Alexander Yuzhakov uh, and uh, you will see the lesson about the ocean and uh, how to draw the ship in the ocean and the hurricane and um, my name is Alex Kraski, I'm a well-known artist, uh, Las Vegas artist and I am really happy to present my best friend lesson today. Let's watch it! So today, my name is Alex Yuzhakov and uh, I wanted to show you today how to draw the ship and this is uh, this plot was made up by me and it's my fantasy and that's how I imagine the ship uh, you know got into some you know hurricane in some disaster and now I just want to kind of approximately show you the silhouette of the ship and um, we will try to do the sketch of it. Now I will draw the line of horizon. And um, uh, you will see, you know, the way it goes. So later, most of this painting will be gone. I mean, the ship and everything, the, the sketch that I do now will disappear. Because now uh, it will be covered uh, with other colors. Uh, now we are looking for the source of light. And uh, I will kind of try to see how the wave waves goes, and um, I'm just trying to do some sketch here. Like I say, soon it will disappear. Now I'm taking the bigger brush. Now it's indigo color, and uh, now you can see that I do dark colors. It's a front plane, front composition that we see. It's the closest to us place. So, and the paint is kind of dry. We put some mm, solvent there you know, to make it smoother. You see, the brush strokes are kind of harsh. Because now we just try to determine the amount of paint and uh, the location of it on the painting. I put some white color. And, uh, you know, we just need to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, we're not gonna do this speedy video or too fast video. So everything is in real lifetime, real time, right? Real lifetime. No, real time life. Oh my God, you know my English is not that good. Uh, slowly we go to the sky, and I added the ultramarine to indigo. To do it more, you know, visually striking, we put some pink, just a little bit. And but remember, it should be very little amount of adding different colors. Just don't put too much of it. It's a fine canvas. So the surface of it, it's fine, smooth. Uh, you can see the amount of painting now. It's not too much of it, but it's enough. It's enough to do some, you know, some stuff with it. I decided uh, not to show the easel with all these oils. Uh, I will just show you the, the painting itself and how I do it on the painting because it's not going to be too many colors. It will be indigo, ultramarine, crop like pink, 
also white then cadmi red and yellow so it's not going to be too many colors on this painting which uh, you will see it will make it easier much easier to paint this painting even though uh, the whole piece will remain only in my memories very soon because it will be covered with all other colors uh, the remembering of the piece the remember of the sketch will help me later because i will keep it in my mind i know where the sheep is i know where the sky is i was looking for the picture of this ship but i didn't have the right picture before because almost the same i mean the, the piece that looks like it looked like it was an 18 something it was very I didn't want to do the exact copy of, of an art piece I saw before. Uh, but let me tell you something, um, it took me one hour and a half to make the whole piece. It's pretty amazing guys, you know, one hour and a half and he did this masterpiece. That's what amazing about Alexander Yuzhakov and that's what makes him very different from other artists. Now we put some Mars Brown so some brown color Mars Brown about the brushes the white of the brush is about 50 millimeters so it's pretty white and it's synthetic but uh, it's not very important really now it's the face like um, it's just the beginning of the painting so the quality of the brush it doesn't really matter it's not that important I'm trying to make this piece of sky lighter because we want to see the source of light where it's coming from The strokes, it's like they catch in each other, they clench for each other. Yeah, just you do it slowly. Slowly we go from sky to the water and we do it with very smooth strokes. You see how I do it? So our task now is to spread the paint. First it was pretty harsh, but now I work with empty brush. I don't really take any other paints. I work with a paint which we already have on canvas. And I'm trying just to spread it all over the canvas, all over the painting. But in no case I'm trying to do very to do it very smooth. I add some more white and it's going to make it transparent transparent water as you see my brush strokes have this um, character of the sheep already and that's what makes us see see better we put a little bit red cadmi into the sky and make it warmer Sorry guys, I'm trying to translate it the way I can. It's kind of difficult, you know, to translate it. 
because Sasha uses very you know specific words for artist and I don't know all of them in English but I'm just trying to make it easier for you guys to understand so now you just do it like a smoothly with brush <clears throat> Okay, do it gradually, gradually, right? And you don't want to over light it. You don't want to put too much white in there because you can destroy the colors. So you do it very carefully and gradually, gradually, yeah. So now you can see that uh, I'm taking the other brush and it's just regular construction brush, you know. Uh, they use it uh, when you paint the walls, I think. And you almost don't touch the canvas. Almost without touching the canvas, you are trying to do the smooth strokes. And as you see now, the location of the waves, it helps us to stress the darkness of the ship. And also it helps us to see the direction of light, of the source of the light. You know, every time he paints, it's just so amazing, so impressive. I never saw anybody does, you know, work like that, like Sasha does. I add some paint to the, you know, to the ship. So you just need to paint a little bit more to darken it. And then you put some color. Now it's brown. so interesting in the beginning it's like okay now it's the light behind the ship and now we the, the it's like it makes the weight of the ship better you can see it's like making heavier and do you know all this painting we do it almost at the same time you go to the sky and then to the, from the sky to the sea and then go back it should be all you know going together because you don't want to leave one piece undone and the other one you know, done so you kind of go back and forth from one place to the other from sky to the sea from sea to the ship and you just add some strokes from one place to another In the process of this, you know, of making this work, I didn't really have any plan. It was just my intuition. So Sasha always does it without a plan. Alexander, always. And sometimes I make the decision, like I'm making right now. I decided to make it darker, uh, just some, you know, some part of the painting, just to make the clouds heavier. The same as in the water, which is do it lighter here. You see, we put more light. But you don't want to put too much white. We don't want to see pure white there. Which, you know, we, we just shapen, we are shaping the shape of the clouds, that's all. But, as he said, don't put too much white. A 
as you see, the first minutes of painting are very, I would say, rash or harsh. Harsh, yeah. And that's the interesting trick when they take some um, oil from the sky and they put this oil from the top to, to, the, to the ocean. So it's a very interesting trick that artists do. They just take some art from top and they put it to some other place. And uh, in, uh, that's how we do uh, the smooth transferring the colors from sky to water. It's almost like they have the same colors. And the main character here, don't forget, it's a ship. And you see how Alexander does it. He just make it very smooth. The, you know, the, the shape of the, I mean, the, the water and the sky, it's almost like there is no line there. It's like they go f f without even horizon. Okay, we put a little bit more white. And you see the movements that I make? That's how we make waves. That's the technique how we make waves. So we paint basically uh, on the canvas. We don't use easel in this case. I just take this white and I, I put it, you know, into the just. And now you see the first strokes, which are harsh. We push it here. So the next ones are not that harsh. They are very, they are smoother. That's how we do it very smoothly. Oh my God, guys, I hope you understand, you know, my translation. Because, it, yeah, okay, now you kind of do it rounder. That's how you do the shape. Very similar for the real waves. And now that's how we do the transparency of the waves. Now I use the smaller brush. Oh, no, no. Actually, he got the, the wider brush, right? And he advises you, I mean, I advise you to use the wider brush. Yeah, so it will help us to do the waves with a bigger brush, 50 by 70. Yes. And uh, the minimum size for the big brush, it's 50 millimeters white. So for the waves, he uses these bigger brushes. And again, he, you know, he does the strokes So on the right side, we can allow ourselves to make the clouds more visual. But on, on the left side, you shouldn't really do it, you know, that, how to say, that sharp. You just do it like blurry on the left. But uh, where we see clouds, it should be more sharp, more visually visible. So now I took the smaller brush and I'm trying to shape the tips, the tops of the waves, right? They are lighter, they are more lighter. So that's how we shape the waves. See, oh my god, it's so amazing how Alexander does it. You will see at the end it's going to be just one of the most amazing pieces you've ever seen. So I use the same brush and I do, do it lighter, 
where it should be more transparent water so that's where the light goes through the wave and it should be the lightest so when you do that I took the better white color it's it's pure white okay I do a little bit red cut me I just put a little bit very little So don't overwrite it. That's what he keep, what Alexander keeps men mentioning. Don't do too much white. And try to get some other colors from the painting and mix it with the white you have. These brush strokes they showed us the direction of the light. And they are the most, they are the brightest one, the lightest ones on the picture. That's how we see the direction of the light, where it goes. Like it's already, it already looks so real. See, so many people try to do waves, but the way Alex does it, uh, I never saw anything like that. You know, I know. In this case, I use my fantasy, my imagination, but you can even copy what I did. Or the same as me, you can just use your fantasy. Yeah, you can do the form and uh, you will not have really striking difference if you use your fantasy. Just, you know, do whatever you feel comfortable. That's the form that we see. Here it's, it, it should be darker. So it's all the same color. So you should put some darkness where it's very bright, it's very where you see the light, and you should put some brightness where it's too dark. So it's one of the conditions. I don't know exactly, you know, Alexander explains it. It's a very difficult, you know. I mean, the technique that he uses is very unique. But um, yeah, I'm an I'm a portrait artist myself, but um, I never painted the sea but he does it in a very unique way I would say you know I think it's just you can just watch it and uh, so I'm still trying to draw the drawings of the water that's how he said it. it's, it's he just he's just trying to make the water more transparent As you can see, he pointed his attention in the, in the middle of the painting. It's like the center of this composition. So it should be more details, especially in, in this part. You know, that's probably the, one of the most parts of the painting, the, the, the light. So here I should do some even lighter near the near the front of the ship because that's where he breaks the waves where it goes you know in his direction that's that's where he breaks the waves
that's why it should be lighter it should be whiter This guy is something, you know. I know he's got a lot of students. And so basically, I'm taking this paint now without any solvents. That's what helps me to put the oils on canvas, the paints on canvas, easier way. You know. So you don't need to add some sol solvents or dissolvents into the paint. You just use pure paint here. Yeah, you see that's the way he does the waves. And that's where the light touches the sea. That's where he tries to show it to us. Of course, with all this detailization or you know you, you don't want to overdo it but soon we will paint the ship and some of this form will be gone but now he said I am pretty satisfied with the result and that's what's important, you know, when, when an artist say, says that the result is good and he likes it and he's pretty satisfied with what he's done, that's when it's so good. Now I got the smaller brush, very small brush, and almost without any paint, I am just do some detailing, some, I paint some details with this thin brush, with this very small brush tiny brush I would say now empty brush it means that there is nothing on it I'm just spreading I am spreading it around and I do the transactions you know from white to black very smoothly we put some more white here to, to make it you know, again the light to make the light more visible, more striking. And that's the form that is in the shadow. It's not that bright, not that light. So I put some pink color there. Oh my god, it looks so real. I don't know how he does it, man. I hope when I will paint something like that, it will even remotely look like that. So it's like you're doing these shaky movements. You see? And uh, that's how it becomes like that. But the, every artist has his own, uh, you know, way of painting. And if, if it's going to be not the same way as mine, it doesn't mean it's going to be worse than mine. It's, it just will be a different way. And it will be the way you do it. It's your signature. That's how Alexander calls it. It's going to be your signature. Yeah, but I think better follow him because his way of painting is re looks so real. 
I saw the final pieces of Alex and unbelievable, you know. Now we do some more light. We just lighten it up a little bit more, which stresses the tran tran transparency. But you don't want to do too much. Like I said before, you don't need, want to do too much white because you can over light it, over lighten it up. You don't want that. Wow, this piece, this wave looks amazing. Look, it's almost like really, it's like light goes through it. Unbelievable. Um, slowly go to the ship. And now with... Okay, you do it this way with the... I don't know what's the name of it even. It's like a stick or the pole. So it's not that difficult. He said you will learn how to do it. And you correct it this way. So that's how you draw these poles on the ship. I don't know, there is some, there probably speci there is some specific name for, for these poles, but I, I don't really know how you call it, how they call it, you know, the sailors. Impressive. So you just press it hard and uh, then it turns out like that. So make it more visible with the help of a brush, like sharpening it. Then the nose, I mean the, the front of the ship. Unbelievable. Look at that. So now you see that's what I was thinking before and the location of them with their direction they point to one place and after that the people see it in some you know special way it's almost like three dimension that's how he does it yeah like it has some it's almost like it has three dimension in it, you know. Okay. You know, sometimes you don't even really need translation, I think. When he does it, it's just I'm trying to do some kind of story, you know, for everybody. Maybe it makes it better to understand. But then you just need to follow his brush and the way he does it and basically you can learn so now he just mix the brown uh, red pink to make it warmer to make warmer the wood which you know the ship consists of consists of okay Man, you know, it looks so easy when he does it, but uh, believe me, when you start doing it, it's 300 times more difficult than you can even imagine. I, I already tried it, and it's very difficult, you know, it's not that easy. It's when expert does it, it looks easy. Okay, and now you, you do the... What is it though? Some kind of, how they call it, uh, some material. So the storm just began and they decided to turn the direction of the ship. 
to to the direction of the waves so we want the front hit by the wave but not the board so they are trying probably to just turn it to the left or something you know they, they're just trying to swim to some to some different way yeah it's almost like they're doing the left turn right yeah that's what he's trying to show us so we see it's not only dark color but we also need to put some bright colors which shows us the light which comes to the ship so here is the ship dock or what's the name that's where Of course, I I didn't have this task to, to do the exact shape of the ship and historical, you know, truth how it was built. So, yeah, he he just made it up. I think this ship. So it doesn't need to be the exact way it was built in 18,000. No, so it's a very old ship. And uh, in this part, we will put some boats here. Very carefully, uh, you need to point the source of light. On these poles you see where the lights come and very carefully just do it you know with these tricks so yeah that's the source of light and that's where he touches the poles and gradually, slowly, go to the ropes. So they call this rope stackelages. So there are many ropes that, you know, co connects the whole ship. And y you basically, you basically lead the ship with the help of these ropes. So just use very little amount of uh, brush on the edge of this tool. see it's almost like it's getting alive you know <laughs> if you think about it soon we will see the sailors running there you know the captain and the whole group of them on the surface of the ship you know very cool so you used to see it white you know, the clothes, the, the material. But in our case, it should be kind of grayish, not white completely. Just. Unbelievable. You know, as an artist myself, I just can't believe that it looks so easy. Okay, that's these pieces of material they helps the ship they help the ship to to do the turns interesting that's the very interesting moment when the same piece of material of clothes
So some of the parts of it should look darker and some of them should look brighter, lighter. It depends where it locates, where it's located. I don't know guys, I hope this translation is helping you. Uh, this white spot here, it's uh, for anchor. It's the hole where anchor is. You know, the, the, the language he uses is pretty difficult and, you know, yeah. So here we form the details, you know, which makes, which make it look better. And then we do it sharper here. Yeah, that's where the light goes, you see? That's where he goes through through this clothing. I mean, not clothing, but, you know, what is it like? I don't know, on the ship, what's the name of it? There are some specific names for, for that, for these pieces. You know. You see, it's so interesting. He just shows us where the light touches the ship. So he just uses very thin brushes. Wow. Do you see what I mean? I mean, recently it was a dead piece of canvas. And now it looks like it's just getting alive in front of our eyes. So he just want to make it whiter, but uh, I think that's what he's saying now. I think um, it was done in vain. He doesn't want to look at them so bright, so light. But I think it's, it looks amazing. I mean, it looks just the way it should be. That's where the sun touches this, you know, the surface of the sh of the ship. Alexander Yuzhakov, I think, is one of the most amazing artists. You know, I know him in person, and um, so these are the ropes. You see how particular he is in drawing even these small pieces. And the flag, Andreev's flag. So this is the Russian ship. Yeah, so there, there must be some, there must be a flag there. Which shows that it's Russian sheep. And every time he does these pieces, it's just so impressive. I, I always can't believe when uh, you know he starts it and how it looked in the beginning. Okay, now you still do ropes. And you try to to draw multiple ropes. I mean, many of them. See, yeah. So 
So that's the stairs. The ladders. So first ropes and then So that's how I show it. The, some, of, some of them are behind these pieces of material there, and some of them are in front. So that's what makes it real. That's what's the, what makes the ship real. Looks almost like it's real. Look at that. I don't know, guys, if, if for you it looks same amazing as to me. So you, you can put as many details as you want, but in most cases um, the amateurs also watch my, you know, art pieces, the way how I drew, draw it. And I want them to learn how to do that. So for us, this kind of detailization, this kind of details on, on the ship, uh, it's enough. But uh, what Alexander is saying now is that we all need to, to, you know, to go forward and to, to do our best. So you can sometimes, you can a little bit, you know, help with your finger. Unbelievable. Sometimes I got distracted. Um, and sometimes I go from ship to the water. And because, you know, I, th I think that um, I'm a little bit tired from drawing the ship and I go to some other pieces, you know, to some other places on the painting. That's just so cool. You know, when you watch videos like that, uh, the only thing you have in mind, I think, is just to do the same thing, or try to do it. So, n now I'm trying to put some strokes here with a thin brush, and I just... I don't uh, put any paint on the brush now. But I'm just use whatever paint I have already on canvas. Yeah, and maybe I can even use some dissolvent on my brush. And here we see very little pieces of foam here. Yeah. So what what he's saying is that he doesn't even use any oils anymore, any paints anymore. He just you know use it with empty brush. And. Um, He's just painting with empty brush now. He uses whatever he has already he has already have on, on the canvas. It's just look damn real, you know.
to the more he paints it the more real it looks to me I don't know it's just a video I wish I could see the whole piece the real piece but I'm sure it's same amazing as we see here maybe even better oh you see he already painted some people there Damn. Remember I told you in the beginning, one of the best artists. Thank you for your attention and I hope you liked it. And you will repeat my steps and um, you can see my other videos also. Uh, goodbye and have a beautiful day. Thank you guys for watching this video and like I say, I hope you liked it. Uh, but actually to me, for me, it one, it's one of the most amazing pieces.